Rising ground, folks. I'm on the way to a brand new customer. Guys, this customer has more problems than what they can account for. She believes that um, this is her relative's house. She believes that there's air in the radiators, but they can't confirm if the boiler is actually working or not. So at this point, I don't know if the boiler is working and it just needs to be bled or if something's going on with the boiler on top of, you know, issues with the radiator. So guys, let's debunk all this. So let's figure out what's going on. I am almost there now. I'll see y'all when I get inside. All right, guys. This is a 80% US boiler. We installed a few of these. These are great boilers. What is this? This looks like a big boy. At least 100,000 BTUs. Now guys, the customer said that some of the radiators and baseboards on the top floors aren't getting hot. He believes it's air in the system. They have a total of Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, four thermostats, and that's why you see four zone valves here. Now, I just turned this boiler on about five minutes ago, and guys, upstairs, this is a very interesting setup. They have zone valves with your drain here to bleed air from the boiler. However, on the top floor, they got baseboards with bleeder keys on them. So this drain valve at the boiler is a great way to drain air from the boiler. But if you can, it's a lot quicker to just bleed air from the top of the system. Granted, if you have bleeder vents on the radiators or baseboards. But just to confirm, all of my supply piping is hot, which is great. It tells me that hot water is at least getting to all my baseboards and radiators. But if it's cold on the way back, that means I got to add water to this boiler and go to the highest radiator or baseboard. And I got to start bleeding from all the way up to the top down. And that's very important. You always want to start from top down because guys, typically air is going to build up on the highest radiator. If you start down, you're going to go back and forth and it's going to take you twice as long to bleed all the air out. So typically if you do have to bleed radiators and baseboards out with the key that I have on my hand here, always go top down. Now what can make this job tedious is that as soon as you start bleeding air, you got to come back down here to fill it up. So just like riding a bike guys, the more you do it, the more efficient you'll get at it, regardless of how long ago you did this. <laughs> But yeah, this return is, I know this is my basement zone. Yeah, my returns are, are burning hot. Now, before I go upstairs, I'm gonna give you guys a free game here. Your returns and supply down at the boiler can be burning hot, but if you don't have enough water in the boiler or if you have air in the system, the air is going to get trapped up at the radiators. The air is sometimes not going to get trapped on the lines. Sometimes the lines on the return can get cold, which is a clear indicator that you have air in the system. But sometimes, guys, which can be very confusing, the lines can be hot downstairs, meaning on your supply and return, and you can still have a cold radiator. But right now we're sitting at between 5 and 10 PSI. I'm gonna fill this up to 20 and we're gonna head upstairs. I'll be right back. All right guys, I got my boiler up to 20 and this I'm assuming is the basement zone. And these are the baseboards with the bleeder vents. Bleed it and see what comes out. Oh shit, you see this? This is a flathead. Well, there's only two type of bleeder vents for hot water heating systems. You have the flathead bleeder vent, which you'll need a flathead screw, and then you have the conventional bleeder vent in which I need the P3 
piece that I have on my hand to bleed it. But I guess. Let me get my flight head. I'll be back. All right, guys. Let's replay this. Oh, we got water coming out. I'm not gonna open this full max, but you see this? You got water coming out. I repeat, if you have water coming out, you don't have an air problem. You have a flow problem. Well, there's only about two or three other baseboards on this level. If I got water coming out of every single baseboard, that at least tells me that my bowl is pressurized enough to move water up here. But if it's not flowing, that's not good. All right, guys. Let me check the other ones. I'll be back. All right, guys. I thought this was a, <laughs> a patio to another exit, but that's a one-way ticket on a roof. Interesting. Very interesting door. But, guys, look at this. This is the other side of the third floor. All these are hot. So, yeah, guys, this is interesting. If I know I have enough bullet pressure and half of the radiators are hot and the other half, I got water coming out, I may have air. I may have to bleed it at that drain valve on a bowler, but I have to first identify which zone is which. It's, it's numbered. It's not really labeled. So I don't know what one, two, three, and four are. I may have to turn each one off and try to isolate the zone valves. That might be the best bet. But yeah, 90 plus in this room. All right, guys, let's go back downstairs. I'll be back. Guys, now we're back to the scene of the crime. There's four zones. They're not labeled actual areas. They're labeled numbers, which is okay. I turned the basement zone off. There's a basement zone. There's a first and second floor zone, and there's a back door area zone like a back room what the customer said they have four zone valves but only three thermostats the main area thermostat in the living room does the entire first and second floor that's the area that i want on because my second floor is the only zone that's cold my basement is hot my back area room is hot and my first floor is hot but the second floor isn't so what i'm going to do i got to figure out what zone valve goes where Right now, the only zone that should be on, or the only two zones that should be on is my first and second floor. All right. Any resistance means the valve is closed. No resistance means the valve is still calling for that particular zone to be open. Three is closed. Two is open. Looks like one is open. Four is closed. So four, and I just turned this zone off. Four I know is my basement. So with that being said, one and two are tied to that main area thermostat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna valve off the return on my first, my fourth, and my third floor. It's either one or the other, guys. Worst case, if the area is number one for the second floor, then I can just add more water. But I've got a feeling that even though it's not labeled name-wise in a room, I think one is first floor, two is second floor. And once again, my second floor pipe is burning hot, but my return isn't. All right, guys. Tell you what, let me get my bucket. And let's valve this off. I'll be back. Now, in the perfect world, you should get a hose. But guys, if you got enough air <laughs> in the system, actually, when I opened this, I wasn't getting any air. And within a couple seconds, some came out. Typically, if 
you have like a large amount of air in the system, even without a hose. If you use a bucket, you either hear that knocking or you probably won't even get any water. You'll probably only get air for like a couple of seconds until you see a full stream of water. So guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the boiler back up and I'm gonna check the radiators on the second floor. I still have my returns off on the other zones and technically the other zones are off. The only two zones that are on is my first floor and my second floor. So that should be the only two zones that we are removing air from. But I guess with that being said, let's go back upstairs. I'll be right back. All right guys, what do you know? 100 degrees. Hundo, there we go. And they got mini split units here, which are great. I'm assuming they got to be heat pump mini split units. So hopefully they can use these as a backup, but I didn't ask the customer about the mini split units. I actually didn't even see these until we came up here. Hopefully they're still working. Cool, 109. All right guys. Bathroom is rocking and rolling. Bada bing, bada boo. And the only area that I'm concerned about is here. I wonder if the piping is crossed somewhere. Because we were. Well, this one was. See, I actually had to chip the paint away from this vent. Tell you what, hold on. Now we're forcing all our water pressure up here. In theory, that should help us out. And we got enough water pressure up here. But this is the only vent that I can't get open. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to chisel some debris out of this vent and we gotta crack this open because the pipe comes off the floor. This pipe is definitely lukewarm, it's not cold. I gotta feel, I gotta get feeling that vent needs to get open in order for us to heat up this last portion of the baseboards. I'll be back guys, let me get what I need. And this baseboard is a no-go. Look at this. Now, I didn't ask the customer specifically in this room when the last time this particular baseboard was working, but the fact that this thing is stripped, last thing we wanna do it's put too much pressure on this thing and it snaps and now we can't get the water to, to stop. Guys, this elbow is burning hot, but my temp on this side is 60 degrees, guys. And we're at 20 PSI on our boiler. And also I got water coming out of that vent. As you see, right in the middle of all these lights, I got water coming out of that vent. So I know we have enough water pressure up here. But I think this vent is stripped and that is causing us not to have water flow on the most essential part of the red eater. I'll try chipping away the paint around the threads here, but yeah guys. I like the bleeder vents that stick out because worst case if they strip you can just get a pair of channel locks and just unthread it and put a new bleeder vent on. But this particular one is not the case. What I'm gonna do, most importantly, everywhere else on the second floor is hot. But I can call around and see. I'm pretty sure there's a MacGyver way of doing it. 
like I've seen this before, not with radiators, but I've seen guys, I've seen a video a couple of years ago of a screw being stripped. They make a hole in it and it's something, it looks almost like a, um, like a cone bit. You drill in the middle and as soon as you back it out, the whole screw, that strip come out. I got to look into that, guys. Like I said, with these bleeder vents, it was always the external vents that you can just twist off if they strip. But this particular one being embedded in the baseboard, this is something that I have to look into. And you see here, it's definitely warm. Guys, I just spoke with the customer and they said that particular area always has been problematic. But one thing I did mention to them is the fact that the surrounding areas are hot. With enough time, that middle room should get some type of ambient heating. But worst case, if it becomes problematic, we'll have to definitely game plan if we can either replace that vent or the radiator. But all right, guys, everything's rocking and rolling. There you have it. I got to do the paperwork and roll. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.